Hello, this is Malorian, and this will be a 2000-ish game of my Bretonians against some Warriors of Chaos. So now this is my second game of the campaign. I thought that it was going to be Wood Elves all the way through, but it turns out some of these are actually race specific. So in this one here, I'm actually defending a Bretonia settlement, and so I had to bring up my Bretonians for it. And what this is, is an old mission from a white dwarf or something, where really an old great battle was supposed to have been held here. Bretonians hold it sacred, so it's all supposed to be fairly open. And the way that the victory conditions works, if one side is Bretonians, is that it just matters about the holding the table quarters, because it's all about just preserving the land. So in the very end, it's only going to be table quarters, and then this building in the center is going to be worth D3. Uh, you can't be holding it with characters, uh, monsters, or war machines. No overlapping. Uh, if you're inside the building, you're not holding any of the table quarters. And let's just get to what I have. My 2,000 points is uh, 9 questing knights. I got 15 knights errant with the errantry banner, and I got the BSB. Uh, my mounted yeomen are vanguarded up there. I got my 20 archers. I got my 15 knights errant. And in there I have the Prophetess, there's a Leadership Banner, and that's Stubborn with the Dispel Scroll. And then a nice hefty Grail Knight unit that's a full 12. Uh, my opponent gets 2200 points just because of the way that the map is right now. And he has 6 dogs there on the left, about 24 warriors with the Market to Zinch and Shields. And in there he has his BSB, then a good sized unit of Chosen that are Corn with Halberds. And in there is a level 2 Tzinch Sorceress. Uh, behind them is what looks like a Demon Prince, but it's actually his War Shrine. And then on the far right is a big massive unit of Marauders that are Mark Corn with great weapons. And he also has his Lord in there. So really when I'm looking at this, I do not run really any infantry. Uh, the only way I take Peasants is that they have bows. So for me to hold a building just doesn't really happen. So I'm really just planning in this one to give him the building the chosen will be out of the game and then everything else will be about wiping out his other units and controlling all the table quarters because if i control all four table quarters i can't lose so that's really the goal uh, i got the two units to hit hard on the left and on the right either i can hit hard with my grail knights and hopefully take away steadfast or if i can't do it right away and something goes wrong i got the stubborn crown there so We'll see how it goes. This first picture is pretty crappy, but really all that happens is that he's moving up. Uh, as far as the Eye of the Gods go, he's just really getting things like fear and terror. It's nothing too impressive. On my first turn, you know, <laughs> you can never really depend on peasants, but in this case, I'm going to risk it. I really don't want these hounds to be getting in the way of these charges I want to set up, so my mounted yeoman went and charged him. And it turned out, actually, that these guys have the, the Mark of Nurgle or whatever it is that gives them poison attacks and a 6-plus armor save and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I, I maybe my peasants can do it. And in the end, they managed to do it. They took some losses, but they killed them, got past, and that's fantastic. I've removed that one support unit of his, and now because it's all about table quarters, now these guys can just run around and hold something. So they're still very useful to me, and all they need to really do is be annoying and then hide. Uh, otherwise, I'm just setting up my charges, trying to be about 15 inches away. Uh, if you're wondering why some of my bowmen are gone, that's because on his turn he got off the treason spell on them. I actually just let it go without even trying, so I thought it's funny watching my archers kill themselves. And same thing on the right. I'm just setting up to be 15 inches away, and the big thing I got done this turn is I got off both my uh, Throne of Vines and also the Shield of Thorns on my main unit, so that's pretty good. So on his turn, his Chosen go inside the building. There's nothing really I can do about that now. Uh, his units, otherwise, are just kind of uh, reforming to make it so that both my units were definitely on the front. It wasn't really needed, and in fact, it helped me on the left side because now my BSB's unit turned out to be even closer. So that was fantastic. Uh, you can see on the right, it's a little bit of a trap where once I charge in, if I don't break him, then his shrine can be flanking me, but uh, hopefully that won't really matter. 
So my turn two, always the, the most important turn for Bretonians. And on this side, you'll notice my Grail Knights aren't taking part in the fun, and that's because they failed their charge. So that was really bad, but the good thing is that I was able to power through the flush to stone. So being Toughness 7 makes me feel very comfortable, and uh, he challenges me with his Lord. And even then, you know, his Lord can't touch me just because I'm so tough. On the other side here, I also fail a charge, and once you know it, it's the close one. The BSB unit, where I think I just needed something like a 5 or something, I rolled 2 one, one and I failed the charge. So, questing knights go in all by themselves. <laughs> you know, I'm in a challenge here as well. I'm just going to get slaughtered, and this was just so disappointing. So after everything was said and done, everything went perfect on the right. I was able to do enough to take away his steadfast. He broke. I ran him down, so that's fantastic. Uh, on the left side, I got my butt kicked. I lost by only a few, actually, but I still broke. Uh, he ran me down, and the worst thing is not only did he run me down, but he ran far enough so that not only is he getting the charge on my BSB's unit, he's getting a flank charge on the BSB unit. Yeah, and here we go, his turn three, he just swings around into that flank. And after this turn, it looks like this. So it actually didn't turn out all that bad. Uh, he tried hitting me with some a magic. I think this might be the time I used my scroll. Uh, he has gateway, so that's a little bit dangerous, of course. But he broke me on the bottom. I got away, and that's pretty good because I have a little idea of what I'm going to do. And on the top, he actually flanked me with his shrine. But, you know, he can't do anything to me because I'm so tough. Uh, I beat him through static combat res, uh, he broke, and luckily he got away, but I mean, it's my turn next turn, so he's doomed anyway. My turn three, I charge the shrine, get rid of it, uh, the mounted yeomen are just kind of coming down here to be annoying, and what's going on here is my knights errant, they rallied, but I didn't even bother to move them, because what I'm setting up here is that he's going to charge my knights, I'm going to flee, pop over the Grail Knights, and then he won't be able to get to me. And then the big temptation I'm giving him is that then he could be passing a leadership test to go after my archers. They would also flee, and then hopefully then he'll go far enough so that he'll be showing me his flank, and my Grail Knights will really kick his butt. So that went completely according to plan. Charge, flee, redirect, flee, and look at that. I'm all set up for a beautiful flank charge. So on my turn, I charge in. I mean, just to add insult to injury, these guys are now Toughness 7 as well. Uh, he makes a challenge with his BSB, doesn't do anything to me. I actually end up killing his BSB in a, a challenge, and uh, yeah. So in my turn, it looks like this. Uh, my other unit had swung around just in case. My mounted yeoman just moving out of the way. And now, basically, everything of his is cleared, and all I need to do is just kind of survive and wait out the game. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't make that easy, because he gets Irresistible Force with uh, Gateway, and rolls double sixes again to completely erase my Grail Knight unit. So, that really hurt, and the other thing is that he used his second eye in one of the previous turns to get off the Throne of Vines himself, so when he gets these miscasts, they aren't really mattering. But, uh, yeah, so now with the units I have on the table, it's not as good. So my turn five, I'm really just, my mounted yeomen are off on the far left corner just so they can't be seen. Uh, these guys are here just to make sure that, well, I, first of all, I did for BSB range and then realized the BSB was dead. Uh, my archers didn't rally. They ran off the table. And, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of sitting and waiting and casting magic buffs. So on his turn, there's not much he can really do. Uh, he goes and he does, I think, his treason on these guys. But, of course, I mean, when it's 4 plus to hit, 4 plus the wound, 2 plus save, then a ward, he, it just didn't really do anything. There's not much he can really do from in there, except for another lucky gateway. And at the end of the day, I had three table quarters. Uh, he rolled a two for his D3, so Bretonians win three to two. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, some things to take away from this battle is, <laughs> I guess you can never be too safe with a Bretonian charge. I still can't believe how everything flops so poorly on the left. I mean, that was just 
the worst case scenario. I mean, the main unit failing their charge and then him uh, catching the knight and going far enough to get a flank charge. It's just, you know, if, if it wasn't for me to be able to really work out that counter with the Grail Knight trick and stuff after, I just would have, it would really, really would have sucked to have lost the game because of that. But uh, either way, it was a, a really fun battle for both of us. I know we both had our highs and our lows, and, you know, it's always fun to do these different missions. So, hope you like watching it.